So we're back here again. Jay Grace from the Grave Digger Report. Have a great defensive tackle by the name of Noah Washington, Morgan State. Let's go and introduce him. Noah, what's going on, champ? How's everything? What's going on? How's everything going, man? Man, everything is blessed over this way, man, here on the Grave Digger Report. You know how we do, man. Seeing the bigger picture before the frame, man. So you know what? Last time I seen you down at the HBC Legacy Bowl, man, you was wrecking habit. I seen yes, you. Sir. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, you had a you had a, actually a, a tackle for loss in the backfield, you know, on the NFL network. It mm -hmm. just seems as of right now, with your size being 6'5, 275 pounds, you're making a lot of lead way as far as within the, your position as playing the defensive tackle. But that. nonetheless, for the listeners, viewers, and followers, we want to bring everyone up to speed based on your ability, your journey, and mm -hmm. also just your whole progress as of current, as of right now. So, mm -hmm. as of right now, so we know that you are from New Haven, Connecticut, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two or three. Mm. <laughs> exactly. And you were a dual sport athlete come out of high school. You yes, know, sir. take us, you know, a little bit, you know, behind the scenes on, you know, how that journey started and where you are as of right now. For sure. Yeah, I was a dual sport athlete. I played basketball, football, and I did a little bit of track too, uh, at the end of my senior year. So um it was it was great being able to translate all those sports into being what I'm actually good at. I'm actually good at football. I I, I figured out I was not good too good at basketball early on, but <laughs> I told the football route for sure. Yeah, you know, and you know, we were speaking offline during high school. You were playing uh, seven on seven. Yes, sir. Yeah, because my <laughs> yeah, my sophomore year, I I didn't I wasn't doing too good in football, honestly, and, and I felt like it was I had to go back to the worth ethic. My my family put me into the uh, some training, and that training developed into seven on seven work. So I was playing wide receiver and outside linebacker in my seven on seven work. Okay, great. So coming out of high school, you actually went to Central Connecticut State, correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So give us a little spill about that, because now you you know you just got had an outstanding season, two outstanding seasons at at Morgan State. But being mm -hmm. at Central uh, Connecticut State, how did that work? Give us the give us the rundown. Yeah, so I was at Central Connecticut State for like three, four years. Uh, okay. Pretty well there, made all conference a couple years, and um, just going through that. Uh, kind of my last season, I kind of wanted to make a change uh, in my environment. Uh, I figured that I, I, I should hit the transfer portal because I didn't, I didn't really like where I was. I've I seen a lot of people come and go out of that program, and I just wanted right. to make the best of my opportunity to try to make, bring myself to the next level. So I hit the transfer portal with a, with a good mindset. I wasn't really looking for nothing crazy. Uh, I did have a good bit of offers. I had a transfer portal. I did have a FBS offers, and I had FCS, uh, CAA offers as well. And I went to Morgan State for the visit, and I fell in love with the coaches, and my, my mom fell in love with the coaches, my dad fell in love with everybody, it was, and it was just a good environment to be around, and from the second I stepped foot on campus, I just felt like it was the right spot to be at, you know, so. Based on mental cognition, what was the mindset, you know, during that whole transfer journey? Because we know a lot of athletes, once they get into that transfer mm -hmm. board, you know, the mind, the heart, and even the spirit is just like, you know what, this is what I want, but however, this is what you probably need. This is what you need, yeah. Exactly. So, Going into the transfer portal, it, it was like I, I was kind of leading with my heart to see where my heart wanted to go or what opportunities were going to present itself. So I went on my visit, like I said, with Morgan. Right. And it, it just felt right. You know what I mean? A lot of people look at these big schools and say, oh, I got this school. I got to go there. But right. that school might not really care about you, how this school is going to care about you. So I made that opportunity to go to Morgan State when I had other schools looking at me. And I just wanted to make the best opportunity out of, out of going to HBCU. So. Exactly. You know what? There's a lot of great things that are happening in the HBCU, you know, mm -hmm. on the field, off the field, and, you know, just the whole community that is surrounding the HBCU as well. So we definitely want to give a shout out to all HBCU. For sure, for sure. for, you know, so for yourself, you know, at Morgan State, defensive tackle, 275 pounds, you know, you stick out like a sore thumb. Yes. You, know, <laughs> you definitely do. As of right now, we know that you are getting ready for your pro day mm -hmm. in about two weeks. Yes, Do you sir. think that going to the HBC Legacy Bowl was able to give you that ignition, give you that fire, have you be able to put those pads back on? We haven't had the pads back on since. For know, sure, yeah, it was a while. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really adjust back into playing again. It was it was a different feeling because you you be away you're away from it for so long until like regular season you go back to spring bowl, but it was like during January, so you had to really lock in right away. Um, it was, yeah, for sure. Because I went out there and I did what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I put a name for myself, uh, and it was just a great opportunity to be able to show the, the coaches and the and the scouts what I could do. So, exactly. So, and you were, you know, you definitely did. I, I was there. There's one mm -hmm. particular one I was um watching you go through your pass rush drills, and I, I was like, wow. I said his swim move 
mm-hmm. is, is, is so effective. I don't think any offensive tackle out here can be able to really stop it. <laughs> and, you know, on the game, on the NFL work network on that Saturday, you portrayed that tackle for losses. Now, just to rewind, Morgan State, mm-hmm. we're talking about tackles for losses. We're talking about sacks. We're talking about fumble recoveries. We're talking about <laughs> kick up fumble recoveries for touchdowns. Right? <laughs> 50, 40, 40, 50 yards down the field for touchdowns. Yes, sir. <laughs> like athlete, like defensive backs weren't catching you. No one was mm-hmm. catching you. So you had that athletic ability. You're very agile. You had that cat-like reflexes. Going into pro day, what can we actually expect? Uh, for sure, you could definitely expect to uh, see me be able to move really well, uh, change the direction. Uh, I've been working on that a lot throughout this whole process. Uh, my, my track coach even said I'm probably going to put up a good number for the 42, so – I'm excited to do that, and I've been practicing the bench every after every one of my workouts, so I'm ready to put that on on paper. You know what I mean? So, exactly. So, you know, we actually spoke about systems, and we also talked about goals. Goals mm-hmm. are what we want to achieve, and systems are the process or the place or the routine of how mm-hmm. we achieve those goals, right? In yes, all sir. domains, in all domains of life. Can you speak a little bit about some of the goals and some of the systems that you have in place to say, you know what? this is going to give me my great production or this is going to mirror my productivity? Yes, sir. So some of the goals you want to really look into is like being a standout player. Uh, Obviously the goal is honestly to make it to the next level as well. So to be able to do that, you have to go through everyday schedule. You have to put in the work every day and it's like, you can't take a day off. Um, And when you have that mindset, it's like anything's possible. Uh, Coming in to basically coming into work every day with your head on straight and doing everything you're supposed to do. You're going to, they're going to get looked at and it's not going to go unnoticed for sure. It's not, you know, one thing that doesn't go unnoticed is that I actually follow you on Instagram. I mm-hmm. see your routine. I see that you're up around five o'clock in the morning, man. For you know, sure. Every day you're up at five o'clock in the morning. So mm-hmm. you're taking this as, Hey, this is my job. Back in 2023, you took off the shoulder pads. You took off the helmet. You placed that right into the locker room. Mm-hmm. As of right now, we're getting ready for the pro day. That is going to come up in two weeks. That system that you have in place can you take us how you are working out, where you're working out? What does that look like Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday? How does that look? For sure. So it's, it's definitely different because now you don't really got nobody over your shoulder telling you what to do and when you got to wake up and where you're supposed to be. So you got to be accountable yourself and, and do the work. So I work out every day, twice a day, basically. Wow. And uh, I wake up at like 5.20 in the morning. I got my workout start at 6.30. So I got to be there and um, – I wake up, go go to workouts, uh, come back, go eat, uh, maybe take a little nap. Then I go back to another workout. I got another workout in the afternoon, so at like three thirty. So I bounce back to back from like track to uh, agility work with my agility coach as well. Yeah. Every other day, so you got to be accountable for yourself, and, and you got to wake up on your own and go to those yeah obligations. You know what I mean? So. It, it's tough, but you got to do that. And on top of that, I'm still in school as well, so it's having nice. a Having to balance out school with that whole schedule, this whole pro day schedule, it's, it's tough, but you're going to get through it. You know what I mean? So Definitely. You know, one, I, one thing I want to say is hats off to you as well, too, is that you're actually pursuing your master's degree in yes, sociology. Sir. So tangibly, your master's degrees that you're currently working on, because mm-hmm. most NFL prospects will say, hey, you know what? I want to put this on hold yeah. while I go ahead and work on going to pro mom and dad and family. <laughs> Also, the Grave Digger Report, ESPN Sports Center, we could go down the line. But mm-hmm. for yourself, you're kind of like, you know what? I can do this collectively. I know mm-hmm. I know my domains. I know my focus, and I know my internal locus on what I need to focus on. Can you speak mm-hmm. a little bit about that to the listener, viewers, and followers? Yeah, for sure. So I, you got to have a backup plan throughout this whole process. So I, I didn't want to put nothing on hold uh, with this whole – I already started my master's, so I'm like, I'm going to finish it. You know what I mean? So um, – I'm still working with that. I, I communicate with all my, my my professors. They're cool people, and they understand the whole process that I'm going through right now, too. So still, it's tough. It's definitely tough going through this because you don't know your schedule is so clustered with everything you got to do and everything you got to take care of, but you got to handle your business, like I, like I said before. So, hey, yeah, yeah basically. Definitely. So you, I know for a fact that you have a great support system around you. Mm-hmm. And here in the Grave Digger Report, you know, we spoke offline that I'm really big on the wraparound support system. And we're yes, talking sir. about, you know, the Pop Warner coaches. We're mm-hmm. talking about the community reinvestment. And we're also talking about, you know, the parental, which is in the home. 
And mm -hmm. before we get started, definitely want to give a shout out, you know, to Mr. and Mrs. Washington, you know, for, you know, you, you know, your journey as well, too, because I know they have provided much support yes, for sir. yourself. You know, can you speak on the support that mom and dad has actually played a pivotal role in your life to where you are now? Yes, sir. So they've been through this throughout this process the whole time, even when I wasn't successful on the field. Uh, they, 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 they led me in the right direction and they, they put me in a position to, to be great. You know what I mean? They gave me the opportunity. So I, I definitely thank them from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Cause without them, I wouldn't be in this position right now for sure. And um, yeah. Yeah. And definitely, you know, shout out to mom. Cause you know, she said that she was asking more questions than you, you know. No, yeah. She went on my visits. <laughs> they, they fell in love with her before they fell in love with me. So yeah. that was, that's where I knew it was solidified. I got it. I had to go to Morgan State. So yeah. Mama knows, you know, <laughs> yeah, they, know from, they got that gut feeling hundred percent. You know, you know, mama knows, you know, but one thing I can say is that, you know, here on the Grave Digger Report, I know as far as for the athletic ability, you know, as far as for when scouts see you, and I know they have the same tunnel vision that I do, is that, like I said, the agility, you know, the quick hip flexors, you know, willing to get off the ball, and then your overall knowledge of the game, your upscale is continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, what scheme do you think that for yourself would be pivotal for you? going and playing on that next level and you know this is actually playing out of the, the four eye or mm -hmm. playing out of the five mm -hmm. or just saying you know what i can play you know the, the one and for listener views and followers we're just talking about you know the nose tackle which is the one technique and also the three technique which is your mm -hmm. formal tackle over the guard the five technique over you know the um the tackle which one do you feel which would be best for you so i think it was uh it was great because I, I played at two different schools with two different uh, schemes, basically. So mm -hmm. I've been I played in the four hour, I played in the three tech, I played in the five, and, okay. and being able to have that experience underneath my belt, I think I can play any scheme that you need me to be in, and I think that makes me more valuable as a as a player. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. So the versatility is there. Is there any you know is there any uh, team that you're actually speaking to ever as of right now? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple teams for sure, uh, and they're gonna come to the pro day, see what I can do, and I just gotta put everything on on tape for sure noted how has you know the community of the school of morgan state bears been behind you you know being able to provide you know such substance you know that as you move forward in your journey there's my players got my back for sure 100 percent right. like, and me up throughout this whole process keep doing your thing and everything like that so like, they just excited for me to be in that be back in the weight room and get all my stuff in and be on yeah. that field again and put on a show for real so yeah what, what you know what is taking place at morgan state and this is just being real. I mean, because the Great culture, <laughs> the <Great> culture, <laughs> y'all doing it there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Alfonso Graham, you know, that came out. You got Toes. You got, you know, uh, the defensive back Drew as well, too. Like, mm -hmm. like, 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 what's taking place, man? I mean, you guys are just spinning out, you know, defense of NFL players and also offensive players as well, too, NFL mm -hmm. prospects and protégés. Like, what's taking place there, man? Uh, culture, man. Uh they got good people coming in, uh, and, and it's just a, a good environment to be around. The coaches, Coach Sue knows how to really run that defense. Uh, Coach Font, D line for sure, and, and you know it's just uh, it's something that they're gonna shock a lot of teams in this conference in the next couple of years. And, and when they build that brotherhood again, this next couple of years, I foresee see them in a celebration bowl for sure. Definitely, you know, I definitely here on the Grave Digger Report. I definitely want to give a shout out to Morgan State. You know, mm -hmm. as far as for the school, also for the academics, you know, as well, too. You mm -hmm. know, as, you know, um, just being an overall school that's collective, that's being able to shine and being able to produce, you know, young men like yourself. Because down at HBCU Legacy Bowl, it was it was mm -hmm. a trawful of you guys down there, you know. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and I know that felt good, you know, to go down there on the plane and being able to say, you know what, here's a competition that I'm going to get. But however, I have my teammates with me, too. They might be on a different yeah. side of the ball when, you know, we play different positions. But here we are collectively mm -hmm. being you know, united and being, you know, superstars on and off the field. So definitely shout out to Morgan State on that. Sure. Now, you know, now moving forward, so what day is your pro day on? Yeah, my, my pro day is on March uh, 28th. Yeah, March 28th for sure. Great. And where are you currently training as of right now? Training at Diligence Training in uh, West Hartford, Connecticut. Cool, 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 cool. Shout out to Huff. Shout out to everybody. <laughs> Family. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you is that, is there a certain individual that you met down at the HBC Legacy Bowl that you definitely want to give a shout out to? Someone who was kind of like, you know what, this individual gave me some great competition, you know, um, because it seemed like you were the competition. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but is there someone you kind of like, you know what, like, you know, this is the individual that I was able to go against and, um, 
he, you know, he, 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 he brought me up to speed or I brought him up to speed. And, you know, we, we definitely, you know, have that same, you know, communication because when we go on business trips like the HBC Legacy Bowl, that's all about networking. That's all about connection. Sure. Mr. Scott, mm-hmm. Whether it's the coaches, whether even sometimes it's the fans or so far as myself as being a sports analyst and writers, there's someone in your, in, 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 that was in your camp that you're kind of like, you know what, you know, for sure. Uh, Evan Gregory out of Norfolk state. He was actually my roommate there too. We we had some deep discussions. And it was weird because we had to go against each other too. So it's like we over here we talking about what we got to do, what we got to do on the field, and how how we feeling as a as a player for yourself. You know what I mean? So going going being with him and going against him, it was just a great comp. And I can't wait to see what he's gonna do. Definitely, definitely. Now here we are right now. You know, you're a journeyman, Central Connecticut State, and mm-hmm. also HBCU Pro Day coming up did the HBCU Legacy Bowl. Do you think mm-hmm. that you would have been in this position if you wouldn't have transferred? No, for sure. Um, it, it, it's, it's crazy how everything kind of plays out because I don't really have nobody in my ear telling me what to do or what decisions to make. And uh, my dad and my family, they kind of let me do that on my own. And right. uh, being able to see that whole thing play out, uh, it, it's amazing. And you don't know what God has in store for you until until you until you get there, you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, great, it's a great path I'm on and, and it's a great experience. Right. Do you feel as of right now the game is a little slow to you as of right now um, playing the position or you're kind of like, you know what, um, I'm at a, a median or I'm in a gray area? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it, like during the season it got slower because uh, I've been playing for so long, but I, I, I'm like a sponge. So I'm trying to learn new techniques, new ways of doing different things. So it's like it's never going to be slow for me because I'm trying to improve as a player myself. So. Is there an individual that is playing at the next level that you mirror your game after? Where you're like, not just like that athlete, but say, you know what? This is who I mirror. This is who I am. Uh, definitely Miles Garrett. I mean, I don't got his his, uh, but he he he's definitely a, a player like with his length and his ability and the way he's able to move and play different techniques too. As a player, that I kind of mirror myself and I watch a lot of his film. Noted and received. You know, mm-hmm. one thing I want to say to you is that, you know, here in the Grave Digger Report that we definitely support you. We definitely been following and been watching you. We remember when you were number nine at Morgan yeah. State. <laughs> Hold on, just to rewind, you know, go back, you know, you were number nine and you switched over to number 11. Can you give us an update on that, you know, for the listeners yeah. and also for the NFL scouts? Not for sure. I, I was number nine at, at Central uh, for like two, three years. And, um, I mean, with a change of environment, you got to change things up, too. And, and I came to Morgan, and one of the players already had my, my boy Booby. He already had uh, number nine. And um, I, had to, I had to make a change. And I wanted I, I wore number 11 at Central for practices. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I kind of kind of know how to, where I want to go to. So uh, it was a good transition. Yeah. It seemed like as soon as you – well, number nine, you did Wells, too. But as soon as you switched mm-hmm. on to that number 11. Oh, yeah, it was different. It felt good. <laughs> <laughs> it felt real good in them jerseys for sure. Yeah, it seemed like everything just went upscale, man, from, from mm-hmm. there, man. You know, one thing I wanted to say, man, we wish you well, you know, here on the Grave Digger Report. Definitely going to continue to follow your journey. You know, hats off to you. You know, that's going to take place in you know, a couple of weeks at Pro Day. If there's anything that you definitely need here on the Grave Digger Report, we're definitely behind you, continue to support you. You know, and also want to give a shout out to Morgan State Bears as well, too, for producing the fine gentleman and athlete such as yourself. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. You take care. You too. Easy money. We are here working. What's happening? We are here working. Grave Digger Report.